All right, so according to news source, the petition challenging the victory of Bola um, Tinubu uh, um, of the All Progressives Congress in the um, February 25th presidential election was officially filed on Tuesday. Now, the Electoral Commissioner, Einek, declared Mr. Tinubu the winner of the election, having scored a majority vote of about 8,794,726 votes and at least 25% of votes in 29 states. So Atiku Abubakar of the PDP came second in the election with winning uh, with um, 6.9 plus million votes, while Mr. Peter Obi came third with about 6.1 million plus votes. Now, we are discussing the aftermath of the election and we're asking the question, should Nigerians trust the judiciary to uphold the Electoral Act 2022? Um, and um, want to hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join the conversation. Send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 81 803 You can also tweet at us at Wayshow Africa 1 with the hashtag Wayshow. Okay, so this conversation is a very difficult one to have because, mm. again, the, if you look at the petition, I tried to scan through the petition for uh, Mr. Peter Obi. It's about 100 pages, you yeah. know, like there's so many prayers, <laughs> you know. <laughs> the list is endless, you know. I, now I understand why they pay lawyers so much so money. So much money, you know, yeah. For some of these things. It's a lot. But, I mean, there were so many things that came out um, on those lists while while um, I was reading it, right? I mean, Atiku is also reading his own petition as well. Uh, people never thought they would still go cool. through with the petition because it's almost like, you know. And really, I don't want to focus on the petition itself mm -hmm. because I don't have the expertise to be able to break it talk down. It, yeah. But what I want to talk about or what I want us to talk about is the judicial process. Already... Nigerians came out on the 25th of February right. and on the 18th of March to cast their vote with the belief that they were going to, everything was going to pull through, right? Mm -hmm. So they, all of those things happened hoping that INEC was going to live by its standards. So now that all this has happened, you know, and <laughs> it seems like INEC did not uphold um, some of the promises that were made based on the Electoral Act that was amended, people are now saying, okay, we are now living our lives now in the hands of the judiciary, hoping that they would, you know, mm -hmm, the right do thing. the right thing. So not just, it's not even just about saying maybe obtaining or whatever, mm -hmm. but let us even see that the process was truly credible, you know, like fair. the way unfair, like I, the way INEC, you know, is claiming. So what's your thought, first of all? Hmm. Well, to be honest, I, I really don't know. You know, I was saying to you in the micro that mm. I think our oh, matter is in the hands of God. But as many people have said to me, let's stop, let's let's even leave God out of this thing and stop calling God into this situation. Like now, it is actually in the hands of the Supreme Court and let them just do the right thing. But I don't know. I'm not sure, if I'm being honest with you, I am not sure that the right thing is still going to be done. I'm not sure that the the proper... Judici I, I, can't, I can't promise you that the judiciary will not be compromised yet again. Mm -hmm. I mean, if it happened with INEC, we saw it, pomp and plain. It was very clear. As a matter of fact, I went back, because I went back to now go and read the electoral laws that were amended. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, but you guys, this is not what you people said. This is not what you people promised. Clearly, you people did literally the opposite of what you guys said you were going to, what you guys were supposed to do going by the electoral law. So if you could go against that. Are you telling me now that judiciary will come back and say, oh yeah, INEC was wrong. They shouldn't have done this or they shouldn't have done that. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. I'm just here hoping and praying that really and truly justice takes its course because I'm not sure. You know, um, when you read the quote, I was just smiling inside of me. The last um, bit of it that said something about the judges or something mm -hmm. like that. Yeah. Uh, so I'm really just hoping that again, our judicial system is not compromised this time. right yes okay so i read some part of this um because you know again people think that i read there's a guys i'm trying to pull out the guys to, um i think he went on instagram mm. if i can find his post was by a law or something right that's that's his name okon lagos, okon lagos yeah. 
you know, when he said that Peter would be petitions to Numbo's victory mm -hmm. on account of U.S. drug trafficking, mm -hmm. indictments. In, indictments and others, mm. that even the legitimacy of his candidacy self, you know, yes. first of all, let us even just start, let's just start mm. from there because based on the Electoral Act, anybody that has some form of criminal records, records. or criminal whatever, you are not even supposed to contest, participate at all. Participate at all. So already... According to that yeah. um, write-up, it means that that already disqualifies even yeah. the candidacy. Mm. You know, so I mean, there was something he he said. He says, "I won the election, and I will prove it." This man knows Nigeria, and trust me, he was more prepared for this route to victory <laughs> than the main elections. Exactly. You underestimate Peter uh, Obi at yeah. your own peril. This is he now says. What's Okute? Okute. Okute is coming. Mm. What's the meaning of Okute? I don't know what that <laughs> means. But I'm just saying to you that. It seems to me that Peter will be trust the legal system. Mm. No, now, as you and I, as Nigerians, you know, because again, maybe he trusts the legal system based on the antecedents, based on history, how, you know, he also had to go to court to, to get his mandate, yes. you know, back and all of that. Mm -hmm. So do you, do you trust the judicial system e enough, you know, to say, okay, you know what? Things will play out. Like I said earlier, I don't. I, I actually don't. And that's because... So let me bring up this story now, since we're bringing up stories. So there's this story that we found about um, the SJN, the Supreme um, Justice... Yes, yeah, CJN. The Chief Justice Chief, of sorry, India. Chief Justice of India, CJN, rather. Where it was said that he was found or he was seen on a wheelchair going to have a meeting with Tinubu in London. So apparently he had also left Nigeria secretly, the same way Tinubu left secretly on health basis. So now, if these kind of things are coming up already, then what is there again? So according to the report, let us clear, state it clearly. Now, the report said that he had gone to the UK a mm. week ahead, mm. you know, so that there will not be any speculations and he was on a wheelchair. <laughs> and, you know, all of a sudden now the president-elect is in the UK. Mm. You know, so, okay, so these are all the things that when we see these things. And, and the good thing about social media now yeah. is that anywhere you are in you the world, hide. you don't even know whether it is the hotel attendant, mm -hmm. you know, is... or somebody or the air hostess that has seen you. So a lot of people are actually even on the lookout. Yeah. And this is where I think that, you know, diasporans, because, you know, we have talked about diasporans uh, on Monday. What's this is where I thing? think that, you know, it's, it's beyond just you going on social media and tweeting and saying everybody Shoot. occupy whatever. Mm -hmm. there, are, there are different avenues yes. to really do these checks. And especially because, again, when these guys go abroad, mm -hmm. you really can't, they can't hide, you know. I mean, most of them have to go use the... <laughs> public, um, uh, uh, what's it called, uh, facilities and all of those and things. So of that, they, yeah. there's, there's every likelihood that you somebody would find will somebody will see somebody somewhere. And this is what the story that is coming out. So these are all the speculations. But regardless of all these things that are happening, the person filing or the people filing, because mm -hmm. it's not just Peter Obi, yeah. Atiku is also filing. filing his... they, seem to want, they seem to have faith that the judicial system would mm -hmm. follow through and it would you know, produce a result, you know. Uh, well, let's just hope, actually, that um, really and truly justice is not compromised. I mean, that's that's the only thing that we can just hope for right now. Because this news that I saw this evening actually bothered me a lot. If we didn't hear about this, I would probably not be saying this right now. I'd be, okay, maybe, just maybe. But if this man is compromised, then what, what is remaining? It doesn't matter what um, Peter Obi's SANs, as many as they may be, come to say in court. It doesn't matter what articles people come to say in court. If he already knows what it is that his judgment is going to be on that day, he will go and say whatever it is he wants to say, not caring whatever evidence is. Okay, now look at, we, have, we talked about it on the show before the elections when we brought up this whole indictment about um, the president-elect, um, the whole drug thing. From, and, uh, what's his name, David, David Udain. Yes, the whole drug thing. And David actually had facts and figures. David was one that released all of those documents. We saw it. It was everywhere. What happened? Nothing. He just put everything just went, and then Festus Kiamuese and came on and said, "No, if if a criminal, a criminal will have a number, he does not have a number." And I'm just looking like, are we stupid? Festus hmm. <laughs> is our MVP. <laughs> but I was going to say something though. Now beyond, let's not even take emotions because mm. the truth is that law does not follow emotions. True. What the law follows is facts and figures. Yeah. yeah. Um. The election, why I think that some level of 
um, we should have some level of trust in the electoral process, sorry, in the judicial, judicial system. system. Mm. Is because if you notice that during the presidential elections, mm -hmm. there was a lot of videos, there were loads of pictures, so mm -hmm. they were like facts gathering mm -hmm. that happened amongst citizens. Yeah. People were taking pictures, people were and doing the videos at their polling unit and all yes. of that. So to tell you that these things are actually effective, it's just the patience to be able to follow through mm. that I think maybe Nigerians might not have. Mm. But if you notice, at the elections on March 18, the game was different. People were being slapped for answering four calls. Do you understand? Yeah. At certain polling mm -hmm. units. I mean, people came out on social media to say, my phone was ringing and I just tried to pick it to say hello. The next thing I went blank, I started seeing stars because people... <laughs> were, so, so now, this for me, what it tells me is that, okay... They're actually afraid. They, no, it means that some of those things were actually effective mm. because if that is what didn't happen, you would not have, you know, you would not have, you would not have had the, the kind of aftermath and the attacks that happened at the gubernatorial elections. Mm. Because now people were not, you know, you taking couldn't, chances you, they were well. not taking chances, so you couldn't even, if you bring out your phone, I mean, there was one young man on Instagram, Charles, mm. that said that um, he was at the polling unit, so he now wanted to say, oh, I'm at the polling unit, I'm trying to whatever, that's, the guy at the back was saying, take, take out your phone. Before he could say a word, the person behind him gave him a death. Like yeah. he saw, he said he ran for his life. <laughs> he had never seen this near-death experience. It's funny, mm -hmm. but you see, this, it tells you that the, the, the free reign that the presidential election um, you know, got away, got away with, yeah. Yeah. they couldn't allow that to happen at the gubernatorial election. So that only gives me hope, hope. that, okay, really some of the the things that transpired, yeah. you know, all those pictures and everything that were taken, mm -hmm. you know, maybe they are admissible in the court of, court law. of law. But that one would be for the, what do they call them? The, the judges and the... Or the SAMs. Or the SAMs to, to determine. Well, you know what, let's take a break, right? When we come back from the break, I would like to open our phone lines. I want to hear your thoughts, you know, about the judicial system. Should Nigerians, you know, trust the judicial system? Should we, you know, bank on them that they will do their job? And, and, and you see, when we say they will do their job, people are saying that, are you insinuating that uh, it's because your own candidate did not no, win? We know. That's not the job I'm saying. You know, I just want people to, I, for me, anything that gives everybody a plain level field, that's what I want. Yeah. Give everybody fairness. So if everything is checked and not, it comes out that, okay, the process was truly free and fair, then we are good. So we'll take a break. When we come back from the break, we'll open our phone lines and hear your thoughts. Stay with us, we'll be right back. Hi, if you just tuned in, it's our Ladies Night Out, and Chinelo and I, we're attempting to discuss this election <laughs> aftermath, and we're asking, should Nigerians trust the judiciary to uphold the, um, the 2023 electoral law? Uh, please let's share what you have to say. Remember, you can join the conversation. Send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 081 803 You can also tweet at us at Wayshow Africa 1 with the hashtag Wayshow. Now, our phone line is now open and the number to call is 70 7749 That's the number to call. Remember to turn off the volume of all the devices that you are watching us from. The number again is 70 right, so Tinila, I wanted to read some things that I saw about this... Um, what they will be needing in court, in what court. they are asking. Uh -huh. Hey, Omo. Uh -huh. <laughs> but you see, the truth is, it's just like our the Nigerian police. If they want to walk, <laughs> they will actually don't underestimate this police. Oh. You know how we complain that um, we don't have proper data, we don't have documentation, mm -hmm. we don't have all of these things. Mm -hmm. If you will like, be documentationless, if there's a word like that. We'll find something if the you. police is looking for you, they will find you. Mm. Right, if they want to work, they they know their job, mm -hmm. right? And you know, don't ever underestimate what they can do, you know. So, except the only challenge is that they will not say, ah, mobilization, you have to mobilize us. It's all those things that get people frustrated. But if you can continue to mobilize them and you're looking for something, because I remember when we were defrauded one time and the guys, you know, defrauded and how the police people discovered mm -hmm. the people. Right, it was in a different state, completely different huh. location. 
you know. So I mean, if they really want to work, they would work, right? So I so when I saw some of the things that they said they are looking for in court, right? But I think we have a caller. Our first caller for the evening. Good evening. Hello, are you there, Mecca? Hello? Okay. Emeka, are you there? You're live. Yes, I'm here. Can you hear me? Okay, now I can hear you. Good evening. Good evening, my dear. Uh, evening to my... Uh, Good evening. Go ahead. All right. Yeah. Yeah, I'm following you people's conversation on this one. <clears throat> and I just finished uh, watching uh, Kayamo on the channel television. See, um, the problem we have in this country that uh, people will be seeing the truth. And based on the little things or whatever money aspect of it that they are getting from someone else, they fail to stood by the truth and to defend even their profession. You see, it is high time we come out of all this nothing that uh, Nigeria is doing all these days. We saw many people, even my own, including my own friend, lost his life for Lagos concerning this uh, process. Nobody's. Wow, did you lose America? Oh, wow. sorry. Okay. I know, right? You know, I, I keep on saying that I pray that, you know, I never get so hungry that, you know, the hunger just be clouds your integrity my conscience right and all of that so if and i say to anyone if your fight mm. is for a better nigeria i leave you to your conscience if your fight is for your stomach and for what you stand to gain mm -hmm. i leave you to your conscience but the truth is in fairness if you look at the political space right now you can clearly differentiate those that are fighting for Nigeria and those that are fighting for their pockets. It's as simple as that. Mm. Whether they choose to admit it or they mm. choose to deny it, um, it's very clear. If your fight is for a better Nigeria, you would, you, it, would, it would show. You know, so I, I was saying that I wanted to pull out some of the things yeah. that you know, they say they want it admitted in court. So apart from the INEC nomination form, result sheets, Sorry, I won't be mentioning all their codes. Legal, that's why I did not study law. <laughs> I went to study physics. I like just calculate one plus oh, one, I two is okay. Answer. All this English, I know, Sabi. <laughs> Certificate of return, voter's card issued to individuals. Um, um, it says the nomination form. Um, they, 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 there's a part where they said they needed ballot papers used huh. and tom printed and counted. In all the polling units, somebody was asking, is it possible for them to get it? I said, yes. Because guess what? If they are not able to provide it, ah, there's a problem. Hmm. Because legally, you, are all, you see, that's why all those papers hmm. at the polling unit that were not used, we were insisting cancel. Yeah, yeah. The ones that were used, you, you record. The one, so because all of those things are evidences yeah. that should come out. Yeah. So why do you see people going to throw ballot papers inside uh, gutters so that water would, you know, mess it up so and all of that? Up. So, I mean, you see, when you understand Nigeria, mm. it is so clear, you know, some of these things, the reason it happens is because, you know, these are evidences. Mm -hmm. So they need to destroy those evidences. That's why you see them snatching ballot boxes and all of those things, right? Yeah. I mean, and it's so sad that INEC, with all the things that we saw, at least, for fairness, I would have expected that places where people were disenfranchised, they would, they would conduct the election. Whether you people like it or not, you must vote. vote. Uh -huh. Places where there were disruptions, you know, you would conduct the elections, right? So, I mean, you didn't do all of those things. And you just start to announce results just like that. Well, I, um, I think the caller is back. Emeka, I believe. Hello? Oh, I think, okay. Yeah, I was going to say, I don't think they'll be able to produce all of this material. They will. Honest, wow. so, that means you don't, so, you don't know law. <laughs> <laughs>
That means you do not know love. Hmm. So now, they said, ballot paper, let me finish reading it for you. Hmm. Ballot papers recorded, eh, they hear. Ballot paper thumb printed mm -hmm. and counted in all polling units. Ballot papers recorded as spoilt at all polling units. Okay. Ballot papers recorded as unused at all polling units. Certified true copies of voters registration re registers mm. in all polling units letters of request of INEC in fact INEC for by by model uh, accreditation system certified true copies of the by model accreditation system report mm. hey you know certificate of compliance like so by the time this detailing that's so we will sit down they look <laughs> i can't wait you know i'm actually excited see and now this is not even talking about my candidate or someone else's candidate or something like that, you know. The thing is, I just really pray, like I want I want to see it happen. So whether or not Peter Obi is then he gets his money or article gets money, whoever it is, you know, I really don't even care at this point. My own is let the truth you know why just come out. I'll answer you why it is important. Let me take I think Emeka is back. Emeka, you're back. We can hear you. And make her go ahead. Yes, I'm back. Go ahead quickly. I'm so sorry, the network is talking on my side. So, just like I was saying, I was watching the Facebook camera on the channel's television just about a few minutes ago. Oh. She never even allows children. To... Go ahead. Okay, I want to give you a simple example of, of what happened. Just mm. the concluded um, election in Wongu State. I called my own brother. I said, Oga, the election has been, uh, the result has been given. Why all this so maroon and the uh, so called reggae? Do you know what my brother told me? Go ahead. Stakeholders in Wongu State that. You don't, you cannot just disgrace them just like that. I see many words. This is the guy that finished school for the past three years without having a job. He said, brother, I should forget that bag. You know that uh, we ha they have to read. I said, what do you mean by have to read? What stupid, what stupid uh, stakeholders that you, that you people who have said something that is not, that is not the right thing. And because of one, one naira, are you thinking about the stakeholders or are you thinking about your future or about you yourself? Ever, I now ask him question. I say, ever since you graduated, bros, what have you been doing? Have anybody employed you or the stakeholders? He said, no, I should just forget about that. It's just for a while. I say, for a while. Hmm. Thank you. Sad. <laughs> so, so you see sad. that this problem is actually eating in. Like I said, this election is not... So let's even now even leave I neck out of it. So mm. The people, mm. us, were also a problem. Mm. You know, we, we, I mean, we talked about this a lot before the elections. Are we actually ready for this? This good governance that we're all shouting about, good governance. We as people, are we actually ready? Can we see it. Can we recognize can it? We, can we even handle it? Mm. Can we deal with it? These are the questions we need to ask us because we actually have a very long way to mm. go. A very, very long We have a very lengthy time. message from Austin from Delta. Let me see. I think maybe you should take that one. Okay. While I take this one, it says in Peter Obi's petition, he didn't claim he won the election. Neither did he allege allege rigging. He only wants Tinubu to be disqualified, and another pers another election conducted, the weakest case by an opposition party. Well, um, if the law says that, you know, a candidate should have certain kinds of, um, what's it called, um, uh, records for mm. you before you can even participate, right? I don't think, uh, I don't think he's been fair, or be unfair or whatever, to yeah. say, okay, he wants to, everybody will always use what favors them now, the, the, the ground that favors them <laughs> to, to lay the petition. On, yeah. It's a very lengthy petition, I haven't read it, but uh, hey, I think we have Loma from Abia State. Loma, you're alive. Hi, good evening. Yeah. Um, I want to ask us to, with the way to be sorry, I could be setting their job 
I'm telling you, I'm afraid. We don't believe to be sorry again. But sometimes, a Solomon or Daniel can come into justice because see what happened in Abia State. A woman has 15 weeks after in Abia State. We can get those people in the judiciary. Mm. I'm telling you, what that woman has done, even today, in one of the sister stations, I told them that I want that woman to replace Yakubu, Yakubu Mahmoud. I'm telling you, that woman is a godsend. These are the people we live in this country, in the island, in the judiciary. For we to believe the judiciary, that type of woman who released island resource, who stood our ground? Who refused to collect money and stood our ground? I'm telling you, these are the people we need. And we need them in this Sari. Once you see those people in this Sari, I'm telling you, we will start believing in this Sari. I'm mm. surprised we still have the women. I'm telling you, you women should be proud of yourself. That woman has made all women in Nigeria proud. God bless you. Thank but you. I pray you. that this will be your case. Thank you. I really enjoyed that story. Mm -hmm. They even got her an SUV, say, yeah. for, you, for you not to have. <laughs> but hey, see, let me tell you something. We have begged you people that give us certain kinds of things and see, see how yeah. things will change. Then, women are actually, you know, one of the best leaders you can ever find. In your, you know, if you have a woman leader, you are blessed. <laughs> Let's take that comment. Okay, this is Austin from Delta. And he says, for me, any attempt to lose hope on the judiciary, especially the Supreme Court, which is the last bus stop in search of justice, is capable of spelling doom. Otherwise, how do you reconcile a situation where a litigant will, <clears throat> will disagree with Supreme Court judgment and turn around to take the law into his hands? Let us be very careful. That doesn't mean the judiciary is not being suspected for possible compromise. If you have filed your petition, keep quiet and follow to the end. If they disappoint you, leave it to God. The next level of justice, you, okay, that's the next level of justice you can't escape. In the past, judiciary was being held in high esteem. We had justices like um, Oputa, Justice Opaseki, Justice Ademola, etc. They were then seen as next to God, and they were landmark judgments to their credits. The truth is that the present judiciary is on trial, actually. Like was said on Ekremadu's conviction, let justice be served without whose ox is God, and let them not give room to any form of the trust deficits as INEC threw up by failing to upload the presidential results real time. God bless Nigeria. Thank you, Austin. So good evening, my dear beautiful sisters of what are you saying? It says, well, the elections have come and gone. Trust me, you two beautiful ladies in the studio, I do not trust the judiciary and will never do. Millions of Nigerians know that um, Ashwajo Ametinu did not win the election. That's an allegation. And he was declared winner due to the rigging and bribery. That's another allegation. Ashwajo has very strong influence and can bribe his way through. That's another allegation. Atiku Abubakar and Peter Obi, not... Um, Atiku and Ab Abubakar and Peter Obi, not that I want them to lose, but it is like they are wasting their time and fighting a lost battle. If INEC can favor Ashwaju, that's another allegation. I will not be surprised if the judiciary do likewise. Honestly speaking, I do not trust the judiciary because they may be bribed for the case of uh, for the case of um, to, to favor Ashwaju Bola Ametinubu. You will say I told you so. So you see, the thing is, I, I don't want Nigerians to believe that okay, if this court process comes follows through. And Ashwaju Bola Metinubu is still the president. It's now because. means it's because he's compromised. No. Mm. I need us to focus on issues. Let's stop following emotions. Mm. If INEC and the courts, because INEC will be brought to the court, the petition is against, so it's the, the, the filing, the way it is, is Peter Obi, Labour Party, against INEC, yeah. Ashwaju, and APC. Yeah. So INEC is part of the mm -hmm. problem. The so they will yeah. bring in all those evidences. My own submission is if INEC is able to release all these documents, because the list is long yeah. that they are asking for, and everything is judiciously checked, and it is seen that the status quo remains, mm -hmm. then we should say, okay, yes, thank God, and we move on. 
We only are demanding for transparency. Now, you asked the question, and I told you I'll, I'll say why it is important. Mm. The reason it is important for us to see that this process was credible, fair, free, is because for the first time in the history of Nigeria, yeah. we had 18-year-olds, we had 19-year-olds, wow. mm. we had 20 year They did not only come out to vote. Mm. I was so moved because they did not only stop at voting. They stayed, they counted their votes, they took pictures of their votes. Mm. We had young people that were really excited about the idea, you know, yeah. of a Peter Obi presidency. And they came out in numbers to vote. What you are just trying to tell them, if, the, if there is any smell of a rat, mm. that this thing wasn't transparent, it wasn't, um, what's it called, it wasn't free, it wasn't Very fair. Liberal. What you have told them is that they should take that, just like the way we saw people uh, tearing up their cards, is that they should take that PVC and mm. throw it away it's because awesome. it is useless to them. And that is not the point, mm -hmm. I think, INEC. Should because be. guess what? If INEC continues, you know, um, successfully planting distrust in the minds of the electorate, very soon they will be out of job because yes. nobody, nobody will come out to vote. Of course. Do you want that as a body? No. Mm -hmm. So that's the, the thing is, you then have to be very, very clear to not tell people that, come, oh, this process that I did, you cannot discredit it because it was free and fair. Mm. And you produce your evidences. That's all we're asking for. Oh, well, let's just hope <laughs> that they're able Chinelo. to first. <laughs> I don't trust you today. <laughs> no, because, see, when I saw this, I was just like, I, see, I, I feel like somebody said, who are fighting a lost battle. And now, I like the angle um, Peter Obi is coming from. So he's not even about, um, okay, you know what, it is this, this, that. He, he has not even come to fight you to say, okay, maybe they rigged or maybe they did not rig. It is, he has gone back to the first problem that we had, that I thought was even going to be treated in the first place. That indictment. Mm. That is, and that is truly where we should even begin. From, so that we know, okay, was this person even supposed to eligible in the first place? No, but his party cleared him to be eligible now. Of course, his party cleared him. Yes. So let's take <laughs> let's take more comments. Somebody is sending us picture. <laughs> okay, I'm having. Is it our operation? Grab it, snatch it, and run with it. That's the ballot box. <laughs> It says, should Nigerians trust the judiciary to uphold the 2022 electoral law? This is a beautiful question, but sadly to say, Nigerians should not trust the judiciary to uphold the 2022 electoral law if by now the judiciary has not prosecuted anyone for violation with the violations going on right, left, and center in this country. Judiciary systems like our political parties in this country, very corrupt, without morality. Look at how Festus Kiyamo, SAN, yet he always talks from two sides two sides of his mouth. If judiciary will work today, they will only work just because the eyes of the world are on them to do justice. And this is what I was actually going to say, right? I mean, I saw some tweets today from the US mission in Nigeria, even the UK as well, where they were, they are actually paying so much attention to this whole electoral um, process. process now. And I like that because I, I feel like that would actually now make, that's actually an angle to look at it from, that will make the judicial system make sure that they do the right thing because it's not even just about us anymore now. Because if it's about us, I feel like they can just do us anyhow they want and move on with their lives. But now we have other countries that are now looking to see okay, you guys have said these people have filed their petitions. Are you really going to follow through? What is going to be the outcome? So it would actually ginger them or rather motivate them to be very, very fair. Hmm. So, like he has rightly said, I hope that they actually know that now the entire everybody is watching everybody is you know looking. the good thing about this gen z that came out of hmm. you know over they are not smiling you, <laughs> see, you, see those, you see all those people by the time they start see. the process the the, the the legal process they will bring out your name they will bring out your history they will bring out your lineage your children your grandchildren everything they will bring everything out they will write petition against no those guys are not joking they found not... tinubu's plane now is it only the plane hmm. they've been finding things i said at my polling unit one young boy just came and met me auntie so that the polling um the the polling officer you know we said that they call them yeah. the, the officer <laughs> in general yes. whatever he says yeah this is his twitter handle i have found it i'm i've got to tweet it i said ah, ah. i was so impressed you don't you know the kind of joy. People, people you you don't know the kind of joy that I mm. felt with this election. For me, because I've been I've been voting. It was like a new dawn. You know, it was like a breath of fresh yeah. air. 
you know, have been voting, and you could see it immediately play out in the guber gubernatorial the elections. Yes. People didn't come out. Because what will happen is that INEC, we will just tell you people that, don't worry, you don't need us to declare winners. Mm. <laughs> you, no, that's what we are going to say to INEC. We'll say you don't need us to declare winners. So whatever you want to do, please go ahead and point. do it. At this point, do you know? You, president. you know, just you, you president, you vice you. president, you know, like that, like that. So, I mean, so that's why um, we're just hoping that this um, path that both, and which is the legal means, mm -hmm. if there's any discrepancies, they've taken those legal means to yeah. say they want to go and go through the courts. Please, for the sake of this nation, for the sake of everything that we hold as a country, let us be seen to be fair. Let us be seen to be just. Let justice prevail. Mm. What was wrong should be condemned. Yeah. What was right should be upheld, um, or the you upheld. uphold it, or whatever, yeah. or yeah. should be upheld, or whatever. The English is. Now, now Nasabi, the English. <laughs> well, so thank you so much, Chinela. I think we had a fantastic conversation. Yes, we did. And um, hopefully, we'll keep on following the matter. Mm. I'm getting tired of this political conversation, but we, <laughs> we, we don't, don't have, have a choice. choice. <laughs> <laughs> we have to keep saying what we have to yeah. say. All right, so um, in case, before we go, follow us across all our social media handles. You can interact with us further, drop a comment, or more importantly, follow all our engagements on social media. Like, share, and invite your families and friends to watch and follow the conversation. Now, if you missed our quote for today, I love this quote so much. It says, um, the bedrock of our democracy is the rule of law, and that means we have to have an independent, ah, very important, mm -hmm. judiciary, um, judges who can make decisions independent of the political winds that are blowing. Mm. Very, very important. Mm. So regardless of the chaos happening in different political parties, let our judiciary be seen to be independent and just. We'll see you guys tomorrow at 8 p.m. as we bring another great conversation to your screen. Enjoy. <laughs>